Well, England's actually calling for licenses to have knives. I'm not joking. Butcher knives. Um, but, sir, it's established state law, common law. You've been using that land since your great-great-granddaddy. Who, who was it? Your great-great-great-granddaddy uh, that uh, came in and then... I started using the land there and uh, getting the water rights and surface rights, the forage rights in uh, 1877. Yes, it was my you know great 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 back there, for five or six generations ago, and they started establish these rights by beneficial use of the uh, water and the forage and the access rights. Of course, they had to build all of their own trails and roads in them days, and uh, and from that time to this point in time, it's been continuously used. I, I say my rights are either I've inherited my rights or I've bought my rights. You got to remember that back in those days there was a lot of other there was more uh, pioneer settlers here than just my grandfather, and they was creating rights also. And over the years, those rights have been either traded or bought, and now they've gone to me, uh, and so I've either inherited my rights or I've bought them. All right, shifting gears out of that, we've settled that. The media says you claim you've got a right because you were there first, counting on the ignorance of the public. Um, hundreds of armed men, snipers, get into that. It's so alien to people to hear you say, we don't want these armed BLM. It'd be one thing if they had a few armed police BLM for any type of you know crisis or, or, or problems that happened, and if they behave like police. But when they're in military outfits, and those guys are clearly military people. In fact, a lot of them look like mercenaries. They don't look like BLM. They look like real special forces operators. I know them when I see them on both sides. Uh, and when you see that and that they're ready to kill people, you know, fresh back from Afghanistan, you know, just 10 years ago, no one would put up with roving paramilitary federal police, more of them than there are people. And that bicyclist nearby that didn't stop and they shot him in the back a few weeks ago, and, and, and the aggressiveness of them, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we don't want roving federal goons. If the Austin Police Department acted like these people, I'd say disband the Austin Police Department. Well, sure. And let, let me uh, talk a little constitution here. We, the people, uh, have elected our county sheriff, and we give him part of our sovereignty uh, to... Uh, take care of some legal things and what he's supposed to take care of is he's supposed to take care of our life, liberty and property. Now that that authority has never been given to any of those federal officers. If there's a problem, say down on the park down in the park, if there's a problem, they need to call the county sheriff and let them come and take care of it. They don't need to think they can take care of it. they they're they're a, they're working as like a guest. They're they're a uh like a Boy Scout, they're supposed to be helping people, serving people, and and being there for people, not to be carrying their guns and being this great authority. If there's a need, we every county in the United States there's like 3,100 of them. Every county has a county sheriff, and that's why we elected him and paid him to take care of those problems. No, no, I hear you. I'm just so pro-gun unless they totally disband the BLM. Out west, it's dangerous. You need guns. I mean, do you think the park rangers should be able to have guns then? No. Why do they need guns? I don't need a gun on my ranch. I go over all of the areas and play the park ranger. I've never needed a gun ever in my whole life. Neither has any of my cowboys. Not one of us ever needed a gun. If we needed a gun, we'd call the county sheriff. Say, hey, we need some help out here. That's what the park rangers should do, and that's what the BLM should do, and that's what the Fish and Wildlife should do, and that's what the uh, even the uh, FBI should do. They don't have no resting power or, or anything. If they have a problem, call the sheriff and have him take care of their problem, help them, with, help them with them. They're there to serve, only to serve we the people, not to shoot us. Well, I know this. They claim that BLM only has 200 armed officers total. There's a major arms race in the federal government. And I looked at those guys they brought in, and I happen to know they use U.S. military on the border uh, in regular clothes because I've got family that has run operations on the border and in Mexico. And I'll guarantee you most of those so-called BLM guys that were out there were not even BLM. They were probably Joint Task Force 6 or 7 out of Texas. If I had to guess, those were U.S. Army uh, if that is the case, what do you say to that? That sounds pretty treasonous to me. Well, I don't see much difference in uh, uh, BLM 
and the United States Army coming after we, the people of America, and we, the people of the state of Nevada. Paramilitaries, paramilitary. I know that both of us against the Constitution of the United States. When since does any United States, uh, uh, any United States bureaucracy have a right to come against we the people or have arms? I don't see anything like that. They can carry arms as individuals, but when they're in their uniform and at their job, they should not have a gun with them. Only person with a, with a uniform and a and a, and a job would be our county sheriffs and their deputies. They're the only people that should be carrying guns here in America. Everybody else in America should carry a gun as a person. That's their first, their Second Amendment right. They should be able to carry a gun, but not as a as a uh, official servant of, of we the people, except the sheriff. Well, I hear you. The way they act, I mean, they just really acted like they hated in those videos of them tasering people and attacking. They acted like they really hated peaceful demonstrators. They, they look they like they wanted a war. They, I don't know as individually hate us, but they sure was standing there. And, you know, I feel sorry for those people, their souls. I mean, gee whiz, you, you come against your own people, we the people, and you, you, you're threatened to shoot them. And, I mean, it come within a, a, a hair of being them, somebody pulling the trigger. Now, you got to remember, we the people was not armed. It was only the federal officers that was armed or whatever you want to call them. They were armed with heavy armor. Well, that's right. Most of the people did not have firearms that walked up to the line. There were some militia people there that stayed up, mainly on the embankment, were aiming down. It was a very tense situation. Um, our reporters clearly heard it. You can hear it. It's hard on radio to pick it up on AM, but on the video that's gone viral of, of the feds retreating, you can hear them saying, you know, back up, back up, you know, you know, you know we will shoot. Uh, did you audibly yourself hear them say, we will shoot? I, You know, I wasn't there. I didn't personally uh, uh, hear that. Uh, and I only have seen little clips on video. My wife and I stayed on that stage where we we talked and uh, under the flags. We stayed there through this whole operation. And so we, we just we started watching for the flag to come over the hill that we knew we somebody was successful. All the time we was there, BLM had an airplane that was flying in a circle around the encampment, and we could see that sure. airplane. Well, I saw some of your around. sons and daughters leading it, and 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 you know you know telling them no, we're not backing down, and then cutting up in the gate. Which one of your sons was that that did that? You know, I had about three or four sons there, and uh, some daughters. I had some sisters there, and you know there was like a thousand people there. A lot of those people on the horses were, uh, you know. Uh, cowboys, neighbors, and friends, and uh, I had uh, family and friends there, but there was many, many more people I didn't have no, no. But I'll tell you one thing: I shook hands with most every person there, and I hugged their women, and them people were good people. And one thing I understand: the 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 souls of American people, and I think it's all the way around the world. There, there's a lot of good people. A lot, in fact, every soul is good. And I, I, you know, I realize that we need our individual rights to exercise agency. That's what I think our Constitution gives us. Absolutely, you got to have free will, or you're not even conscious. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com.
In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com.